Hello guys, it is Shivam here. Welcome to our brand new video. So here we are going to cover the lesson 5 of this awesome Flutter course for the members of this channel. Now let's get started. So before we move forward, if you have an amazing app idea but you don't have a time or skills to develop an app, don't worry, my team will develop the app for you. So you can search for my startup name which is an app crafting. At app crafting, we transform ideas into powerful, beautiful mobile experience. Whether you are a startup or a business ready to scale, we design, build and launch your app fast, professional and ready for the world. You can just fill out the contact form and get a quote. Just fill out your name, your last name and your email and your requirements as well and after submitting this form my team will reach you out to develop your app for both play store and app store and we are going to move to the lesson five of this awesome flutter course so if you haven't watched the last four lessons of this awesome flutter course i will simply provide you the playlist link in the comment box and in the description box as well you can simply go to that link and can simply follow all the lessons of this awesome flutter course now in our today's video we are going to cover the firebase so as you know that firebase is one of the important backend then we that we usually use when we need to develop a app from the scratch right now today on this course we are going to cover all the basic and advanced functionality that the firebase has i will also introduce you about the main feature that the firebase has which is like a cloud fire store so that we can upload a data to the cloud fire store and we can simply create read update and delete the file by using cloud fire store i'm also going to teach you how we can add some necessary packages from the pub dev to our perspex ml file and how we can successfully connect the firebase for both android and ios device so these are all the things that we are going to cover on this lesson and by following this lesson you will simply get a pro on how you can simply handle all the things regarding a cloud fire store and the second thing how you can successfully connect the app for both android and ios device right now let's move and in the leap folder i'm going to create a new file name which is like home.dart and again i'm going to import the package again i'm going to import the package by using material.dart and we to just pass a stateful widget or a page name which is like in home now you will see that shivam why we have used a stateful widget rather than a stateless widget so these are all the things that we have covered in the past lessons so you can simply follow them and can be a part of this awesome flutter course right because each and every lessons is nearly important just to be on pro on this flutter right so i'll just move and here i just need to first write a scaffold a body container child and a column now here i just need to write column column children then i need to pass, just pass the text widget in the text widget i need to just pass the text which is like an attendance so let me tell you that what we are going to do over here so i'm going to create an app where the teacher can simply add the student's name, their age in this app and that data will be directly uploaded to the cloud fire store and they can simply create an attendance whether which child has been present on that day or not. So that's a basic idea about how we are going to handle a create, read, update and delete method in the firebase, right? So here I'm going to just first pass the page name which is, or the app name which is like attendance and here I just need to pass the styling, we'll use a text style something like this i need to just pass the color which is like colors dot blue then i can just pass like font size which is like 20.0 and we'll just pass like font weight which is like font weight dot bold okay so we'll just call the home page from here so that i can show you basically what all code i'm writing so i'll just need to call the home page something like this now here i just need to pass debug show check mode banner to false so that will remove this banner from here right now this is the text i need that in the complete center so i just need to wrap up with a center widget i just need to pass margin edge insert dot only from the top will just pass like 50.0 i just need to increase the font size so let's pass up to 25 okay i guess that's enough just to show the attendance or an app name now once we do this now here i'm going to just write a container in the container i'll use a width in the width i'll use media query now that media query dot of context dot size dot width will just use child row children then i need to just pass like first i will show the 
student name as i've told you so i just need to write a name something like this name and we just need to pass the spacing so let's first pass a text widget because without a text widget we can't write all these things so i just need to write text widget I just write name something like this now i just need to pass the styling text style text style we can just pass the color it's so like colors dot blue we can use the font size font size which is like 22.0 i guess that will be enough and we can just pass like font weight like font weight dot bold okay so here you can see that this is the text but i need that up margin so i need to pass margin as insert dot only from the left 20.0 now about margin and how what all thing this container has these are all the things i have covered in lesson one right so if you haven't watched that you can watch that lesson right i just need to pass the size box height 30.0 okay so that will be the space from the top now here i just need to pass the username so i just need to write shivam gupta so i just need to pass my name okay then i enter write shivam gupta i can just pass decoration a box decoration color in the color i just need to pass like colors dot gray okay so this is what but we need to pass a different shade of a gray color something like this or we can just pass this as well okay that's look good so once we have shown the username or the student name i need to show his age so here i'm going to copy this text which it back again we'll just paste it over here and here i just need to first write a age something like this i just need to pass a age in the age i'll just pass like age which is like 25 okay so this is what we need to do but in need to do not write in the row widget so let's do one thing uh, let's pass a different color to this to different text widget so that it will look good right so i just need to pass like this okay and we'll just change the color to black something like this okay so this is what you can see and you can see the two different color that we have passed to a name and the name that we have provided right so that's look good right i just need to first pass the column widget over here i need to just copy this row widget we'll just need to paste it something over here i mean need to just change the name to age and we are going to just show the age like 25 i just pass the size box height 5.0 i guess that will be enough space i need to pass the padding so let padding as inside dot all will just pass up to 10 okay now here i just need to pass the margin from right position as well so right right 20.0 okay now this is what we have done now i just need to pass the border radius so i need to write border radius border radius dot circular will just pass up to 20 something like this now here what once we do this i just need to wrap up this container with a material widget we just need to pass the elevation so like 5.0 and we need to wrap up with a container again because we have just passed the margin inside this container we need to pass outside the material widget or the elevation that we need to pass okay so i just need to copy the border radius again so i need to copy this complete border radius we'll just paste it something over here so here you can see this i'll just decrease down the elevation to two okay so this is what you can see that we have just shown the first username then i need to just pass a check box over here so that that we can just check the box whether the respective user is present or not right so i need to wrap up with a row widget and once we do this now here i just need to write a check box so this is the value that we need to pass over here so here i just need to first pass a bull check which is false and then i need to just pass the value and all right okay so this is the way that we can just show the checkbox and you can see that once we do this i just need to move the text to the left side so i just need to pass like cross cross axis alignment dot start something like this okay so here i just need to pass a maximum space between this text and this checkbox so i'll just use a spacer over here so these are all the widgets that will help us to make a responsive app so when i'll click to this you can see that the color has been simply changed right now if you want you can change the color so here you will just hover to checkbox and you can see that you can pass an active color so i just need to pass the active color which is like color colors dot blue okay so that's an active color that we can display something like this okay so this is what we have done now there is some more thing that we can do so if i want to increase the checkbox size i just need to wrap up with a widget which is like a transform dot scale and in the scale i can just pass like 1.5 and you can see that how we can successfully increase the checkbox size if you think that it's too much well you can decrease it down okay so once we do this and this is what we have done now once we move over here and here i just need to pass the another thing which is like a delete so if i want to delete this respective uh, student name and all so here i just need to first pass like an icon in the icon i just need to pass like icons dot 
delete okay so this is what we can do we can just pass the color this is like colors dot blue okay we can just pass the size size we can just pass like up to 30.0 okay so this is what we have done now you can see that this is the dustbin icon that will help us to delete this respective student detail now once we do this now i need a some section where i can simply add this student detail so here i'm going to create a floating action button button so i just need to write floating action button floating action button and here i just need to first pass a child in the child i just need to pass like icon which is like icons dot icons dot add okay something like this now here you can see that this is the floating action button if you want to change the color of this floating action button you can do that so i'll just need to pass the background color we'll just write background color which is like colors dot black i guess that will be enough and we can just change the color of this icon to white so that i can see this icon clearly right so this is what you can see that this is the floating action button that we have created now when we click to this we will just see the dialog box and through the dialog box the user can simply add that respective student detail right and first i am going to connect this app with a firebase then i am going to teach you how we can simply going to cre right create a dialog box right now you will see that shivam you have already made a firebase crude video on this channel yes i have made the video in this channel but the thing is that this course is very really different from what i have developed on this channel because on this firebase crude i am going to tell you about single things that what really fire cloud firestore has and how you can simply because there are lots lots of tips and tricks that i don't used to share in my normal videos but on this firebase crude videos and this awesome videos i'm going to also share you some tips and tricks that you can simply use in firebase just to speed up your process right so first i'll move to the firebase and you can see that we need to just enter the project name this is like a crude so i'll just write crude method okay so that's a project name i'm just skipping we'll click on continue and we'll click on continue again so we'll enable the google analytics for this project it's not necessary to enable this but it's recommended so i'll just tell you that enable that just to access this all features in your app right so we'll use our some default account for firebase and we'll click on create project so as you can see that firebase is preparing a project so wait for a few seconds until it is done now on this project i have just keep a poll like what app you want me to develop in our next lesson so i have just uh, provided you the poll if you haven't put a vote on that poll i'll suggest you to put that vote on that poll just to know me that what app you are looking for because the next lesson will be one of the awesome lesson that i'm going to bring on this course so that will be a complete app that we are going to develop from the scratch i used to make the app but the thing is that that will be an advanced thing and i'm going to share a lots of sources on that next course and by following that app i think so you can get to know about a lot many things that how you can create an awesome apps in flutter and how you how i used to create a professional apps for my business right so here i'll just need to click on continue and will land to the firebase console and this is what you simply land to the firebase console and you can see that there are a lot many things this firebase console has right like let me explain you one by one so here you can see that this is a project overview section now I'll, this is the setting icon now i'll click to the setting icon you can see that there are a lot many things which are like project settings in the project settings you can de you can see that there are no apps in your project so basically you can connect the ios android and web app with a firebase right now in the cloud messaging so this is a cloud messaging so let me i will explain you about a cloud cloud messaging as well so this is a cloud messaging api so this is all the things that we usually need when we are connecting a notification in our flutter app right and this has an integration section like if you want to integrate this all things you can integrate in this flutter uh, through a firebase this is a service account okay okay so this is a data privacy and all the user's permission so this is an important thing so here in the user's permission as you can see that here this is my email id and i am the currently the owner of this firebase account but if you want that three to four developers who are working on a single project by using a same firebase account you can simply add a member and you can just provide them a role like whether they are, you want them as a owner editor viewer or assign a firebase role so you can do the complete thing like this is the important thing because if you want to uh, like some more developers in a single firebase account you can do that very easily so this is the thing that i have 
want to tell you that yeah now let's move to the project overview and in the plus add app you can see that you can simply connect the apple android and web app right now in the build you can see that there are a lot many things like an app check so this is like you can simply run an app check and then you can app hosting app hosting is also an important thing because if you want to host your web app you can use this app hosting feature right now we'll move to the authentication section like in the authentication section you can simply connect all the things regarding a google authentication email authentication or phone authentication so there are a lot many authentication you can use in this app right now here we'll move to the data connect so this is a data connect you can connect a data like if you have if you are using sql or you can do that right here you can see that there are the different extensions you can use in the firebase yeah and then you can see there is a files to database so this is an important thing which is like a files to database just that we can upload a data to the cloud files to and cloud file store is very important thing when you are using the firebase right now here you can see that these are the functions now this function let me explain you that this is the function section like if you need to create some function in the flutter app and you want to run it in the firebase you can do that very easily by using this function right now these are the thing and here is come again a hosting thing then uh, you can see there is storage basically in the storage you can upload any type of assets like images videos pdf audio file anything you can just pass in a storage section so these are all the things that you can simply do by using a firebase and we are going to cover each and everything in this awesome course so that are all the things that i gave you a complete idea what really firebase is and what really the firebase has now let's move and we are going to first connect an app so here we'll click to this add app and we'll move to the apple and here we need an we need an apple bundle id now here you can see that it has simply written that we need an apple bundle id and it looks something like this okay so to get this i will just move to the ios folder and we'll just open the x code from here okay so x code is launching now here i just need to move to the runner signing and capabilities now in this signing and capabilities section i am need to just copy the bundle identifier that is a unique bundle id that we need to simply paste it over here right now here you can see that this is the bundle identifier that i need to simply copy will paste it over here now you i want to tell you one thing that i don't used to tell in my normal videos but I, in this course i am going to tell you that if you want to upload this app to the cloud files not a cloud files store sorry a play store or an app store just to make this app live for a normal users to download you can't pass the apple id something like this because it will simply throw the error so I'm, this is just my experience that i'm sharing with you all that here you can see that it has written com dot example dot firebase crude now you just need to remove this example and you can write anything over here like your app name your company name your name so for example if i write shivam over here it's ready to use but you can't use like com dot example over here because it when you will upload this app then you will simply get an error or the apple will say that please ch change this we can't accept this because it is a com dot example and you need to change or you need to use some unique name over here so this is what i want to tell you all yeah now i will just keep it as it is because i don't want this app to be live so i'm just teaching you all so i now just need to click to the register app and it will just load from here now i just need to download this google service dash info dot pillaged file now this is an important file and if you have an older file with the same name just remove that i am saying this again and again in my each of videos because you can see that if you have an older file you can't use the file with a same name it will just be written like one two three so i just need to rename this and we'll need to paste it below the info click on finish here it is done click on next click on next next continue to the console so here you can see that we have connected the ios app now let's move with an android app now here is an android package name so to get this i'll must i need to close this x code now here i'll just move and we'll move to the android app.